Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Elvis Popchin. I'm a Senior Solutions Architect here at AWS. Thank you for joining me today. Today's session we want to go into VMware Cloud on AWS and more specifically how to implement VMware Horizon on VMware Cloud on AWS. One of the first things we look at is the customer's own data center. How do they have VMware Horizon currently deployed? And what do they want to do? Do they want to extend it? Or do they want to actually migrate it completely to VMware Cloud on AWS? Those are things to consider. For this session, what we want to look at is actually just deploying VMware Horizon deployment as a standalone deployment within VMware Cloud on AWS. The next thing that we want to do is make sure that the customer actually has their AWS account set up and configured that they want. From there, we make sure that the customer actually has a customer VPC deployed. A VPC is actually a virtual private cloud where they can provision private and public subnets, access network resources, as well as needed AWS services. This is also a requirement for VMware Cloud on AWS to connect into a customer VPC. Once we have all this set up, VMware Cloud on AWS is actually deployed. When you deploy this, there are three main components that get deployed. We have vSphere for your hypervisor, we have NSX for your networking, and we have vSAN at the very end here for storage. Once this is deployed, you have a software-defined data center, or what's commonly known as an SEVC. Once VMware Cloud on AWS is deployed, we look at actually the connection back into the customer's data center. In this scenario, we're going to actually deploy what's called a direct connect. You'll see it at the very top here, labeled as DX. Direct connects have various bandwidth options from 50 megabits per second all the way up to 100 gigabits per second. Once we have our direct connect or private link connection set up, we're then able to have the different segments, network segments, or VLANs, set up on the compute gateway, which is listed here. As you'll notice, NSX has actually the main NSX T0 router that gets deployed, which is this right here. From there, we have two gateways that are deployed, which is the compute gateway and the management gateway. Management gateway strictly manages or is a network dedicated for the management VMs for the SDVC. The compute gateway is where you would deploy all of your workloads. As you can see, we have two networks set up currently. We have an application network and a DMZ or public network. In this network, we actually have a network load balancer appliance deployed. We'll use this later in this conversation. From there, we actually deploy an additional network which is typically a best practice for management servers. And here we also have a network load balancer. This is for internal private load balancing. From there, we actually deploy VMware Horizon using the same deployment guides that VMware provides. This includes connection servers, app volume, and even the cloud connector. There are two connection servers and two app volume servers deployed here. When you set this up, you're actually able to use DRS to separate them out to make sure that they're not on the same host. Once the connection servers are deployed, you can actually go in and configure both of them. This includes licenses, security groups, as well as other settings that might be beneficial for your deployment. From there, you're actually able to configure your network load balancer the load balance between the two connection servers and also between your app volume servers. Whenever you configure your connection server and your app volume server, there are prompts in there to actually add your vCenter, which is actually your VMware Cloud on AWS vCenter that's located within your management network. Once this is done, you're able to then load balance. You're able to actually connect to your vCenter and deploy or manage resources within the vCenter from your connection server or your app volumes servers. Once you have this set up, you're then actually able to set up an additional 
network segment. This is your desktop network. This is also recommended as a best practice to separate out your desktop network from your other network segments. From your connection server, you'll deploy your desktop pools as displayed here. Once you have all this done, you actually have your VMware Horizon deployed within your VMware Cloud on AWS. And we're not quite done yet. As you can see, there's actually external users that need to connect into your VMware Horizon deployment. One way to accomplish this is to make sure you request within your VMware Cloud console a public address, public IP Once you have this requested and it is reserved for you, you'll see it within your VMware console where you can actually then configure a NAT rule to actually go to your public IP and then NAT into your network load balancer within your DMZ network. This is all configured through the NSX security gateway appliance within your VMC console itself. Once you have this set up, you're able to then register that public IP address for your network load balancer with your domain service register. This concludes our session for today. Thank you for your time.